Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm delighted to be here at the Faith and Freedom Coalition's Road to Majority. What a big deal that is. Road to the Majority Conference. It's a big uh, event, and there's a lot of people outside wanting to get in. If anyone would like to give up their location, <laughs> please raise your hand immediately. This is my ninth time speaking at this event, and I would not miss it for anything. You know, we have a big rally tonight in Philadelphia, and so somebody said they got a little bit confused, and they had me speaking here and there. So somebody foolishly canceled here, and when I heard about it, I said, wait a minute, what are you doing? We canceled Faith and Freedom. I said, I don't have the courage to do that. I'll do it during the day, which is actually even better, if you want to know the truth, and we'll do the rally later. I don't have the courage to do that. Not to you and not to Ralph Reed. But I want to thank Ralph Reed for his extraordinary leadership, along with Executive Director Tim Head. Great people. Thanks also to Congressman, he's fantastic, Barry Loudermilk. He's here someplace. He's here someplace. He's doing a fantastic job with all of the things. I said he walked through with Russian spies or something like that. He turned out to be constituents, young children. Uh, these people are sick. Former congressman and a man who's heading up New York for us, Lee Zeldin. He's fantastic. Lee Zeldin. South Dakota Governor Christy Nome. Christy. Thank you, Christy. Great. Thank you, darling. RNC Chairman Michael Watley. He's doing a great job. Although, I'll tell you about that right after the 5th. I'll tell you about the 6th. But I think he will be incredible. He comes from uh, good stock. Comes from North Carolina, and they didn't have — they didn't have any votes stolen in North Carolina. That's why I said he's the guy. He watched that voter fraud more than anybody. A friend of mine, a man who got me involved in this whole deal — not this one, I mean, like, eight years ago, he thought uh, we could do something, and we played around with it. And I said one day, let's go, Corey. Let's go. Let's do it. Corey Lewandowski. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. He's a good man. Dr. Alveda King, who's a friend of mine for a long time. I can't see what his lights. These lights are blinding. I can't see anybody. I just know there are a lot of people in this room. But, but they happen to have — they happen to have the lights in a nice angle. It's just perfect. I can't see a person here. Nobody's going to be watching the debate on Thursday night, right? Nobody? Will anybody be watching? A friend of mine and a great businessman and developer from New York and various other places, including Florida, Steve Whitkoff. Steve is here. Thanks, Steve. Look at that hand you get, Steve. You got to run for politics. <laughs> and Moms for Liberty co-founder Tiffany Justice. I love that name. That's, Tiffany, that's the greatest name. I love it. And thank you for your endorsement and your help and everything, Moms for Just. I'll tell you, they have Moms for Liberty have been great, have been great, and Tiffany's been so incredible. So I appreciate it very much, Tiffany Justice, one of the best names I've heard in a long time. <laughs> Most importantly, let me say a special thanks to the gigantic grassroots movement of volunteers who will power the Faith and Freedom Coalition, and uh, I know they're going to be very much involved during the election period. It used to be one day, now it's, you know, two months. It used to start like election day meant election day. Now it means, you know, two and a half months before the election begins, it starts. But it starts actually uh, pretty much on September 6th. That's North Carolina, uh, Pennsylvania's — think of that. So September 6th, and Pennsylvania's uh, September 22nd. And we have to get out there. We have to vote. We have to make sure everything's honest. And you keep your eyes open. You know, you're you're the police in a way. You can be you, you can police your vote. A lot of people don't know that. Just make sure that vote counts. We have to make sure it counts. Because if I knew that there was not going to be corruption, if I knew that everything would be honorable and honest as it should be, I'd stop campaigning right now. We have this thing won. 
I would immediately stop campaigning. I'd go and relax. I'd call up the big rally we have in Philadelphia tonight. I'd say, it's not necessary. Don't worry about it. Everyone go home and relax. No organization does more. You are truly, and I mean this, indispensable. This is a great group of people, and, and you're warriors in the truest sense, and you know what we have to do, because we're not going to have a country left if we don't do it. That's for sure. This year, you will knock on 10 million doors, reach 18 million Christian voters, and register 1 million new voters across 130,000 churches. And I hope you can put the lockboxes in the churches, because that's what you should be doing. You should have lockboxes. You know, these boxes that they cheat with so badly. Uh, you should put them in your churches, because, you know, the evangelicals and the Christians, they don't vote as much as they should. I don't know if you know that, you know? They go to church every Sunday, but they don't vote. And we have to make sure they vote just this time, because all you have to do is this time. You don't have to worry about it, because we're going to straighten it out very fast, just this time. Go vote. But, you know, they have a uh, — it's very interesting. The NRA gave me a very big endorsement, and uh, we were talking about it. And gun owners don't vote very much. I mean, I'm saying this is just this, uh, statistically, we have to get — people that own guns have to go and vote. You own a rifle, you want to keep your rifle, you better go vote, because the — the Second Amendment is under siege, and you have to vote. And who would have known that? I think it's a, sort of a protest. You're so angry about what's happening. But this is, over years, uh, gun owners don't vote much, meaning, you know, some vote, but not, relatively speaking, not that much. And uh, Christians go to church, but they don't vote that much. Do you know the power you have if you would vote? It wouldn't even be. So you got to get out and vote just this time. I don't care. In four years, you don't have to vote, OK? In four years, don't vote. I don't care, but that time. but we'll have it all straightened out, so it'll be much different. Of course, then they'll come in again, and they'll uh, ruin it. We'll have to do this all over again. Then we'll come back and say, you have to go vote. Working side by side, we're going to defeat crooked Joe Biden. We're going to defend our values, and we're going to make America great again. And this will be the most important election in the history of our country. I believe that. I used to say it 2016. We had a border that was bad. But the border was bad, but it was like, I call it peanuts. Peanuts compared to what we have now. That was like a great border. If we had that border now, it would be like, great. It was, uh, it was really bad, but it was uh, just a tiny fraction of what it is now. Now it's the worst it's ever been. I, I would say it's the worst border anywhere of any country, anywhere in the world, at any time. In less than four years, Joe Biden has obliterated the borders of the United States. We don't have borders. We don't have borders. We don't have elections that are proper. We don't have anything. And you know what we want with elections? We want paper ballots, same-day voting, voter ID. And we want to ensure that people are citizens. Little thing. A little thing like, uh, let's make sure you're a citizen, right? You know, they're bringing these people in. They're trying to get these people registered to vote. They don't speak a word of English, most of them, and they come from all over the world. That's what they're doing. I said there was only a few things that could, could it be. They're stupid. Well, they're not stupid. Nobody could cheat that well if they were stupid. <laughs> they're not stupid. Uh, then the other is they hate our country. That could be. That could be. But the third thing is they want to register people to vote. That's, I think, what they really have in mind. So we have to be very careful. And that's where Michael Watley will do the job. That's where Susie Wiles, who's here right now, she's fantastic, and she'll do the job. And uh, Lara will do the job. Lara Trump, who's fantastic. <laughs> she's fantastic. But Crooked Joe wrecked our economy with brutal inflation and $2 trillion deficits. Did you hear our deficit is going to be $2 trillion this year? $2 trillion. His weakness, failure, and incompetence have set the world on fire. He is a threat to democracy. By the way, just by being so incompetent, he's a threat to democracy. His Marxist administration is pushing radical gender ideology into every school, and I'm sure this group is not particularly happy with that. And Crooked Joe has demonstrated uh, an amazing ability to, you know, he's just to demolish the rule of law by arresting political opponents, dissidents, Christians, pro-life activists, like a 
third world dictator would do. It's a disgrace what's happened to our country in such a short period of time, three and a half years. What's happened to our country, it's not even believable. Our one chance to save America from these left-wing fascists is less than — it's now four months. Can you believe it? I've been saying seven, six, five. It's now we're in between four and five months from now. November 5th, going to go down as the most important day in the history of our country. I'm telling you, because we're not going to have — I hope we can get there without ending in a world war. You know, Russia — Russia's got uh, submarines now very nicely in Cuba. You know where Cuba is? It's about two feet away from Florida. No, they've got ships there. And they're talking about, you know, going after Russia in Ukraine and giving them authorization to go after Russia. You know, where is this thing going to? And I've said it. I will get that war solved. If there's anything left, if there's anything left, I'll get it solved as President-elect before I ever get into the White House. But we need Christian voters to turn out in the largest numbers ever to tell crooked Joe Biden, Joe, the apprentice, Joe, you're fired. You're fired, Joe. Get out of here, Joe. You're no good. You've been the worst president ever. You're fired, Joe. Get out. No, worst president in the history of our country. As you know, the radical left is trying to shame Christians, silence you, demoralize you, and they want to keep you out of politics. They don't want you to vote. That's why you have to vote. They're counting on you now. Because if you vote, no, we cannot lose. They don't want you to vote. But Christians cannot afford to sit on the sidelines. If Joe Biden gets back in, Christianity will not be safe in a nation with no borders, no laws, no freedom, no future. They're not going to be safe. You're not going to be safe as a person. And your religion certainly will be I think in tatters. You want to know the truth? I think in tatters. You see what they're doing. And, and I don't know. It's less, a little bit less to do with this room, but we all care. What's going on with Catholics? They are being persecuted. Catholics, what is that all about? By this guy, this guy, this man that has no idea what the hell is happening. And by the way, I don't believe it is him. I think it's the people that surround him, the fascist, communist, the young, very smart, vicious people. Because I don't think he knows he's alive. You want to know the truth, okay? <laughs> the reason the radical left will always come after religious believers is simple, because they know that our allegiance is not to them. Our allegiance is not to them. Our allegiance is to our country, and our allegiance is to our Creator. <laughs> and we do not answer to the bureaucrats in Washington. We answer to God in heaven. You're not even allowed to say that anymore. Today, if you say that, they want to arrest you. If you say that, they want to arrest you. Who likes the Ten Commandments, by the way, going up in the schools? They think it's such a bad thing. I said, has anyone read the Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt... I mean, has anybody read this? Incredible stuff. It's just incredible. They don't want it to go up. It's a crazy world, you know, a crazy world. Things — who would — who would think that somebody would want open borders where people flood in by the millions from all over the world, from prisons and from mental institutions and a lot of terrorists — terrorists in record numbers. Nobody's seen anything like it. Who would think that's good? Who would think that — you know, like a little thing. It's so embarrassing even have to say it. But I say it because it's a big political deal. Who would think that men playing in women's sports is okay? Who would think that? I, I have to say it. Who would think it? It's all, you know, open borders. Who would think it? Who would think this stuff? But in my first term, I defended Judeo-Christian heritage like no president in the history of our country. And with your help, I will continue to fight for our values and our civilization for four more years in the White House. We're going to straighten it out. We're going to straighten it out fast. It's going to go fast. Uh, the hardest thing to do is we have probably close to 20 million people that came in from all parts of the world, and uh, they're going to have to be uh, gone. They came in illegally. Many, many people coming in from prisons and mental institutions. They came in, I mean, from — you know, I say prisons and jails because there is a slight difference. I say mental institutions and insane asylums uh, because actually there there's <laughs> more than a slight difference, right? Whenever I say silence of the lamb, the fake news back there, they say, oh, he's talking about 
He's talking about Silence of the Lamb. And I say, the late, great Hannibal Lecter. Oh, he likes Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> no, they're crazy. When I imitate Joe Biden, can't get off the stage. I walk into a wall purposely. I walk at <laughs> like that wall. Oh, that's, that's perfect. Sometimes they don't have a wall. You're freestanding. It doesn't. But I imitate him, and I, I, you know, walk into a wall, and the next day they write, Donald Trump could not find his way off the stage. No, no. So I don't even do it anymore. It's, uh, these are crooked people. And yet with him, they're trying to say that all of these horrible blunders that he's made over the last week, you don't have to go back much, that, that he was improperly covered. So they say, you know, in the one case, he, he had a fundraiser, and Obama it could have been more gentle, in all fairness. But that's, I think that's a dispute with their own party, because, you know, Obama could have been a little bit more gentle than that, so instead of tugging him off the stage. <laughs> when you think of it, right? But he made it obvious. But he made it obvious. But he, you see that. And then I think 39 different people had their phones up, like you people. You have your phones up. If I did something wrong and I had one camera, then another camera, you know, after you get 39 or so, you say, I guess he, I guess he blew it. But they said, oh, it was covered so, and they, you know, like they changed it, and AI and all this stuff. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. It was, that was the way it was. They're all the same. But the press has bought into it now. Oh, no, he was fine. It was the coverage was so bad by conservative, they say, by conservatives. Uh, when I equated, uh, Two people, I, I equated them. I shouldn't mention the names, but I equated Nikki Haley with Nancy Pelosi. I equated them. They said, oh, he doesn't understand the difference. No, I understand the difference. He doesn't understand the difference between Haley and Pelosi. No, we understand that. I understand a lot of differences. But anything you do, the fake news will take it and turn it. But with him, they take bad stuff and try and make it look good. With us, they take genius, pure genius, and they try and make it look, right? They try and make it look bad. It's the exact opposite. So we actually have to work harder. I told my kids it would be a lot easier if you were Democrats. We have to work very much harder. You know, we have to run the entire East Coast to win. They automatically start with like 38 percent. They start with 38 percent. I mean, I could go into why and the percentages, but I don't want to do that because I think we're going to get a lot of that 38 percent. You want to know that? Like people in unions, not to mention it, like people in unions, because we have tremendous support from the auto workers, tremendous support from the Teamsters, and tremendous, I've, I've hired so many Teamsters. Concrete in New York, it's all delivered by Teamsters. They do a great job. But uh, we're going to have a lot of union support. So I'm not going to say anything. Just think of what we've already achieved, and we've done things that nobody thought possible together. We stood up to the Communists, Marxists, and fascists to defend religious liberty like no other president has ever done. And I have the wounds all over my body. If I took this shirt off, you'd see a beautiful, beautiful person. But you'd see wounds all over, all over me. I've taken a lot of wounds, I can tell you. More than I suspect any president ever. You know, in history, and I've read, I love, the, I love this stuff, but in history, they say Andrew Jackson was treated the worst, President Andrew Jackson. He was a great general and a very good president. And Abraham Lincoln was second worst. Now, he had a civil war, so, you know, you sort of think that was understood. And now they're rewriting the books. Trump was treated the worst, Andrew Jackson second, and Abraham Lincoln third. But I definitely took top spot. I took top spot. <laughs> And I'm honored to do it. And here we are looking for more. How about that? I could right now be home. I wouldn't be in court. I wouldn't be in courts all over the land. All started by crooked Joe Biden and his group of thugs. We restored the conscious rights and all of the things that we've done for doctors, nurses, teachers, and faith groups. Like the little sisters of the poor, we came to their defense. I stopped the IRS from using the Johnson Amendment to interfere with pastors' freedom of speech. And all religious leaders, pastors, not only pastors. And Joe Biden took it right away, and I will give it right back. We're going to give it right back. You know, a long time ago. 
I learned about the Johnson Amendment a long time ago. They've basically taken away your rights. You're not allowed if you're a minister, a pastor, or other religious leader, a rabbi. If you want to say things that are political, they take away your tax exemptions, and they really destroy you. And I put that back, and now they've put it back. It's like a yo-yo. I'm going to put it back immediately. First day, I'm giving that back, because we want to hear from our ministers, our pastors, and our rabbis. And others, by the way. I issued guidance making clear that the right to freedom of worship does not end at the door to a public school. I was the first to, and I'm the only president, I think, to convene a meeting at the United Nations to end religious persecution worldwide. The only time it's ever been done. Because you know what? Presidents, they get elected, and then they don't want to get involved. We don't want to get involved, like what I did for Israel as an example, right, with Jerusalem. Every president for many, many presidents said, we're going to do that capital. We're going to make Jerusalem the capital. They're going to move the embassy to Jerusalem. And nobody did it. And I understood why, because once I got there, I had more pressure put on me from other countries. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. I did it. I did something what many presidents, I don't know the number, but going back a long time, they campaigned on it. They did it. I campaigned on it, and I did it. I, I just didn't take, thank you very much, that's very nice. You know, what? I, I didn't take calls for about four days. I set up the meeting on a Monday and I didn't take calls. I was away, quote, over the weekend. And uh, he'll call you back on Tuesday. Oh, kings, queens, everybody. He'll call you back on Tuesday. And we had a press conference on Monday and I announced Jerusalem, I announced uh, that we're going to move the embassy, and uh, Jerusalem becomes the capital, something. And, and by the way, uh, that's a small one compared to what I did. I got rid of the Iran nuclear deal. Unfortunately, Biden, yeah, but Biden did nothing with it. And Golan Heights and the Abraham Accords. What I did for Israel, and, and interestingly, this group is so unbelievably pro-Israel. It's amazing, actually, and I tell you that. Because in many ways, you give it more support than anybody. You give more support to Israel than anybody, so a lot of people really appreciate that. Thank you very much. I can use that. I can use that love. Thank you. Who is the woman? She sounded so nice. Stand up. Please. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very nice. And you have a beautiful voice, too. Thank you. When I return to the White House, I will once again aggressively defend religious freedom in all of its forms, and it's many forms, but we will defend it in every single one of its forms. We will protect Christians in our schools, in our military, in our government, in our workplaces, in our hospitals, and in our public square. In my next term, I will once again appoint a rock-solid conservative. And we, we are putting in, you know, we put in almost 300 judges and three Supreme Court justices to interpret the law and the Constitution as written. It was being interpreted slightly different than that, as you probably noticed. In my first four years, we totally transformed the federal bench and putting in all of these judges, and nobody's ever seen anything like it, actually, or record pro-Constitution judges. I withstood vicious attacks to pick and confirm three great Supreme Court justices, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett. Good people, too. I took a lot of heat. I took a lot of heat, a lot of hits. But we did the right thing. They're great people. Thanks to these justices, we have also achieved what the pro-life movement fought to get for 49 years, and we've gotten abortion out of the federal government and back to the states, the way everybody and all legal scholars always said it should be. Nobody thought that would happen. That's what they wanted. The whole thing was they wanted — the Roe v. Wade was federal, and they wanted it all back in the states where the people could vote and make their decisions. It's now up to the will of the people in each state. Some states will be more conservative. Other states will be more liberal. It's happening now. You see the votes are all taking place. 
And it's the way every legal scholar and just about all the Democrats and all the Republicans and conservatives and liberals, they all wanted it that way. And we did something that was amazing. The big problem was it was caught up in the federal government, but the people will decide, and that's the way it should be. The people are now deciding, and some states are a little bit more conservative, and some states are much more liberal. If the radical Democrat extremes get their way, they will have a federal law for abortion to rip the baby out of the womb in the seventh, eighth, and ninth month, and even execute the baby after birth. They have that. You know that. The governor, the governor, think of it, the governor of Virginia, previous governor. We have a great governor of Virginia right now. But Glenn Youngkin is doing a great job. But the previous governor of Virginia, you want to make that very clear because uh, he's doing great. The previous was not so good. But he actually made that statement. We'll put the baby down after the babies. We'll put that, and you'll, you'll decide what to do. And there are states that allow that. They're the radical ones on this issue. Far and away, the radical ones, not us. Every voter has to go with your heart and do what's right. But we also have to get elected, because we have a lot of other things. We have to get elected. You have to be able to win. Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in exceptions for the life of the mother, rape and incest. Uh, some people do. I think most people do, actually. But some people don't. You have to go with your heart. But you have to also remember, you have to get elected. I want to thank the six Supreme Court justices, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, John Roberts, Brett Kavanaugh, Neil Gorsuch, and Amy Coney Barrett for the wisdom and the courage they showed on this long-term, very contentious issue. This has been a long time it's been fought. <laughs> Getting it back to the states puts the question where it belongs with the vote of the people. And over time, it will all work out. It's working out right now. But it's all going to work out, and it's where everybody wanted it, including the legal scholars. But it's where everybody wanted it to be. And it's taken, actually, they say 49, but it's probably 51 years it's taken to get this done. Above all, in the Republican Party, we will always support families, babies, life, and uh, very, very important to the Republican Party. <laughs> By contrast, Joe Biden is weaponizing the Justice Department to viciously persecute pro-life activists and Americans of faith. Just last month, the Biden DOJ got Paula Harlow, a 75-year-old woman in poor health, sentenced to two years in prison for singing outside of a class. She was singing, actually, a beautiful voice. She was singing beautifully outside of a clinic. And fearing she would die in prison, her husband pleaded with the judge for mercy and even asked to be thrown in prison with his wife. And the judge responded by mocking their religion. He was mocking their religion. I wonder who that judge is. Paul is one of many peaceful pro-lifers who Joe Biden has rounded up, sometimes with SWAT teams, and thrown them in jail. Many people are in jail over this. This is just crazy. We're going to get that taken care of immediately, first day. Immediately. But let's call these brave Americans what they really are. It's persecuted Christians. That's what they are. They're persecuted. Because these people are really the threat to democracy. You know, they have a whole thing about Donald Trump is the threat to democracy. I'm the one that got us out of the wars. I'm the one that defeated ISIS and got us out of all these wars. You know? I'm the one that had the safest border in the history of our country, and now it's death. And, you know, when you talk about the bad border, you don't realize how many people are dying on the caravans coming up. They're dying because they're told, you know, come on up and we're going to give you education. We're going to give you health care. They're destroying your Social Security. Your Social Security and your Medicare is being destroyed because millions of people are coming up and you're not going to have it. Something's going to have to happen because they are destroying. Joe Biden is destroying your Social Security and many other things to reverse these monstrous abuses of power the moment I win election. And we're going to win. we got to win. If we don't win, we don't have a country. We don't have a country. You know, I used to say it in 2016, and I meant it. We were, you know, I thought that was the most important election. In 2020, I didn't say it. By the way, we got many millions of votes more in 2020 than we did in 2016. We got millions and millions of votes. It's a rigged election. But we got millions of votes more. I was told if you got the same number, 63 million, 
that you win. We got millions and millions. Uh, that's by their count. Uh, and it was a terrible thing. And look at what's happened to our country in three and a half years. It's not even — it's not even the same place. It's not the same place. I always say we're a nation in decline. We're a nation in really serious, serious decline. But we will rapidly review the cases of every political prisoner who is unjustly victimized by the Biden regime, including Paula, so we can get them out of the gulags and back to their families where they belong. Paula, just hold on, Paula. We're going to get you out of there. Can you imagine this? This is a good woman. This is a religious woman, and they throw her in jail. I will also create a new federal task force on fighting anti-Christian bias. Its mission will be to investigate all forms of illegal discrimination, harassment, persecution against Christians in America. And it's taking place at a level that nobody can believe. We're like a country from a different country. We're like — this isn't — this is not America anymore that we're living in. These people are nasty. They're bad. They're bad. But you know what? We're tougher than they are. We're tougher than they are. But we have to — we have to be smart. We have to vote. We have to get out and vote. You cannot sit home. This one day, you have to get out and vote. Never again will the federal government be used to target religious believers, Americans of — Americans of faith. And, and that's all it is. It's Americans of faith are not a threat to our country. Americans of faith are the soul of our country. One of the reasons we have so much crime — one of the reasons we have so much crime is you don't have the faith. You know, you don't have people wanting to be good because they want to go to that special place. They want to be good. There's no reason. It's like religion is — it's going down at a level that nobody's seen before. Nobody's seen anything like it. And it's really having an, a tremendous effect uh, long beyond our churches and our synagogues and our mosques. It's long beyond — it's beyond everything. Religion is becoming less and less of a factor, less and less important in our country. And that's causing a lot of the chaos and a lot of the crime that you see. If, the, if they were grown up with religion, they wouldn't be doing the things that they're doing because they're doing really bad, bad things. So we're going to get it stopped. The weaponization of law enforcement is the greatest threat to freedom in America today, I think. And nobody knows it better than me. Look at the way I've been weaponized. I mean, they've weaponized me at a level that the late, great Al Capone, right? He's uh, — I tell it all the time, Scarface. He, he didn't go through what I went through. Of course, they were afraid to do it. They were afraid to do it. They said, well, let's leave him alone. We don't — he would take that gentleman, that handsome gentleman right there. He'd have dinner if, Al, if Alphonse Capone didn't like him. Your family would never see you again, sir. They'd say, what happened to him? He's a part of a foundation under a nice high-rise that's going up someplace at this. <laughs> I got indicted more than him, sir, <laughs> for nothing, for no crimes. Even the uh, scholars, all of the scholars, they said, well, there is no crime here. There's no crime. It's, it's a terrible thing. These are sick people. These are horrible people. Remember this, the reason Joe Biden and his thugs are so desperate to stop us is that they know we are the only ones who can stop them. That's true. All of their persecution is only happening because I am running for president and leading very big in the polls. But since the show trial in New York, that horrible, horrible trial, so many corrupt things happened in that trial. And I think they're seeing it. The people are seeing it because we have the strongest poll numbers we've ever had. And I mean, that goes back a long time now. And uh, the poll, the fundraising is at levels that I don't think anybody has ever seen before. So there's a lot of great, a lot of great things. And I don't know if you saw last night in the new Rasmussen poll, we're leading Biden by numbers that uh, people haven't led by before. Biden is uh, 10 points down national. This nationally. And we're doing even better in the swing states. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. We're not going to allow it. And every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists, and that's exactly what they are, they're fascists, indict me, 
I consider it a great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. But I am. I'm being indicted for you. Never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just happen to be very proudly standing in their way. I am in their way, and I always will be in their way. From the very first day that we take back the White House from crooked Joe Biden and his thugs, I believe we're going to have four of the greatest years in the history of our country. It's going to happen fast. Within moments of taking the oath of office, I will seal the border, stop the invasion, and send Joe Biden's illegal aliens back home where they belong. They belong back home. Don't give me any of that, USA. Go out and vote. That's all I ask. Don't say, USA, USA, we love Trump, USA. And then November 5th comes along, or any of the previous days, you know, the early voting. But, and then you say, darling, I'm just, don't, I'm just a little tired. I think I'll skip the vote. You can't do that. You got to vote. No USA right now. You just go out and vote. Then we'll go USA. Because then we're going to make our country great again. Biden is releasing criminals to prey on our people. That's what's happening. Thank you. Got to get out and vote, right? See this beautiful group of people. They'll be in, they'll be in Monte Carlo on November 5th. I don't think so. We all know the names of too many innocent victims of Biden migrant crime. It's a new category of crime. It's called Biden migrant crime. Remember this. These migrants are tough. They're tough. They come from prisons and, and many other places, rough places. They're just getting used to our country. They're just settling in. Every day, I read where somebody was killed. Beautiful young women, mostly young women, are being killed by migrants. You know, they thought it was like this wonderful dream. I could just see, they said, oh, the migrants are coming in. These people are tough. I, they're so tough. Uh, Dana White, did anyone ever hear of Dana White? He's a legend, right? UFC, ultimate fighter, ultimate fighting. And he has, he's a fantastic man. I said, Dana, I have an idea. Why don't you set up a migrant league of fighters and have your regular league of fighters? And then you have the champion of your league. These are the greatest fighters in the world. Fight the champion of the migrants. I think the migrant guy might win. That's how tough they are. He didn't like that idea too much, but actually, it's not the worst idea I've ever had. No, it's, uh, these are tough people. These people are tough and they're nasty, mean. It's, uh, it's incredible that they come, totally unchecked. But we all know the names of too many innocent victims of the Biden migrant crime. Lake and Riley. And you know, uh, Biden was unable to pronounce her name, called, called her Lincoln Riley. And this was right after, how terrible is that though? Rachel Morin who I just spoke to, the mother is so great. I also met the parents of, of uh, I met the parents of many of the people that uh, died. Met the parents of the soldiers that died so horribly in Afghanistan. But uh, I met Lakin's, Lakin's parents, and they, these are just incredible people. Their lives, I don't know what they're gonna do. Their lives have been shattered. Nothing worse than that. It's so, uh, it's so out of order. It's so out of order. Just the, the, the devastation. I spoke yesterday with Patricia, and uh, it's uh, just, just to uh, hear her talk is just, I don't know. I don't know if you recover from it. They say time, time, time. Uh, it should never happen. Would have never happened with us. We had a strong border. We had the strongest border in history. And just this week, 12-year-old Jocelyn Nunguri, found strangled to death and dumped in a creek in Houston, allegedly murdered by two recent illegal border crossers from Venezuela, viciously murdered. 
these monsters should never have been in our country. And if I were president, they would not have been in our country. We had a strong border. We had strong protection. And we had very strong protection. You know, in Venezuela, we just mentioned these monsters from Venezuela. In Venezuela, their crime is down 72 percent. Can you believe it? So I'm going to talk to Ralph Reed. And next year, we're going to hold faith and freedom in Venezuela where we can be safe. <laughs> Ralph, can we do that, Ralph? Yes. Ralph said yes. No, no, think of it. They're sending all their killers, their murderers, their prisoners. They're sending drug dealers, gang lords, gangs. They're sending them to the United States. We're like a dumping ground. And that's the whole world, not just Venezuela. And you take a look at prison population all over the world. It's way down. Everyone says, I wonder why. It's not because they're behaving, because they're sending them into our country. And again, they're just getting comfortable now. They're going to start hitting us very hard. These people are bad. And that this can be allowed to happen. We have an incompetent president. We have a president who's got a very low IQ. He, and that was in good times. That was 25 years ago. <laughs> Today, today he doesn't even register. It's ridiculous. When they say he gets, I have a friend, he's a Democrat, but he's not. He's a Democrat. Can't help it. That's the way he grew up. But he said to me, I don't, I don't understand it. You got a poll saying you're up 10 points. How can you only be up 10 points? I say that too. How? Who the hell is going to vote for this guy? On day one, I will begin the largest deportation operation in American history. <laughs> Biden's border invasion is also a grave threat to, and as I said, Medicare and Social Security is under, it's under watch. Biden wants to dump millions of illegal aliens into and onto Medicare and put them into Social Security and even Obamacare and suck these programs dry. That's what they're going to do. And you're going to have a problem. And you're going to all of a sudden, they're going to say, we're going to cut it in half. I'm not touching them. I'm leaving them where they are. You are going to see Social Security, if he gets elected, is going down the tubes. I can't even imagine him being elected. Can you imagine four more years? These are the worst. These are the worst four years. As president, I will fight for American seniors not the Biden illegals. I will fight for American workers, not the human traffickers. I will fight for American dreamers, not the child smugglers. And I will restore the sovereign borders of the United States of America. So help me God. You know, they don't want you to say, so help me, God. You know that. It's under siege, right? So help me, God. If you say, so help me, we don't want you to say that. How about, in God we trust? They want it taken down. How about George Washington High School? We want the name removed from that high school. They don't know why. They, you know, they thought he had slaves. Actually, I think he probably didn't, you know. But anybody, anybody that was, uh, I mean, it's just like incredible changing the name of what we won world wars from those forts fort bragg for, i mean so many of the forts we won world wars we dominated we saved the world with from those forts and now they decide to take the names off and wait till you see ultimately what happens with those names they did i call it a transition like transitioning <laughs> they have a transition name before they name it the Reverend Al Sharpton Fort. F Fort, Fort Rever Fort Al Sharpton. Now, you can just, you can just imagine. You can just imagine. But this is a transition. They've done a couple of transitions. These people are, they don't, they're sick. They're sick. As president, I will not cut one penny from Social Security or Medicare. I kept that promise for four straight years, and I will keep it again. By contrast, Joe Biden has cut Medicare Advantage payments. You don't even know this. For two straight years, a total betrayal of seniors. Senior citizens, he's cut your Advantage payments for two years, and nobody knows it. And the seniors have to get on board because, I'll tell you what, they're being treated badly. 
The military is being treated badly. Our vets are being treated the worst of all. How about our vets? They're laying in streets. You know, I had the highest approval rating for a president ever with the Veterans Administration. Now it's one of the lowest ever. What I did was incredible. Like no long waits. If you have to wait a long time, you go get a private doctor, we pay for it. People were waiting three, four months to get — people were becoming terminally ill waiting. Also firing civil service and other workers that were sadists and crooks. But they were sadists. They were beating up our soldiers in their not prime time. In prime time, they wouldn't be able to do it. They'd get their ass handed to them, right? <laughs> but they were not doing it in — think of it. They were not uh, — they were not treating our soldiers right. And I got it. I and mean, you couldn't fire them because under civil service was you cannot fire anybody. They had one in Arizona. They caught him stealing $400,000. They caught him cold. He admitted everything. They couldn't fire him. They could do everything, but they couldn't fire him. Stole $400,000. But they were beating up us. So they were sadists. And I got the right to fire him through Congress. It had to go through Congress. Both of them had to go through Congress. Choice. Choice had to go through Congress. So we got them choice all right. We, and, and I'll tell you, the number of people that were saved, I got the highest rating ever, 92 percent. Think of this. So now it's down to 40 percent. They ended all of this stuff. Why would they end it? They hate our country. And they hate our military. They hate our veterans. They hate our soldiers. Biden — and they made up a story about me with suckers and losers. They made up this story about me looking down at graves, saying, suck it. They make it up. Suckers and losers. Who would — surrounded by military people. There's nobody that's stupid enough to make that statement. Think of it. And I was president. I would have said that would have been uh, justified for somebody to start taking swings at me as president. But they made it up. It's a phrase that was totally made up by a third-rate magazine that's going out of business, losing a fortune. I think it was The Atlantic, a magazine that nobody reads. They got lucky. They got some sucker to fund it for a little while. Some stupid sucker. Her husband's looking down. Her former husband is looking down. He's saying, you dumb, I should have never. <laughs> she took his money and she said, the Atlantic Magazine, let's, let's waste millions of dollars. But no, they made it up. And, you know, you say it's not true, but just 10 percent, 5 percent of military people believe it. This is what we have to live with. It's horrible. Who would say it? Just think of it. Who would say that about — even if you hated the military, you wouldn't say it. And you wouldn't certainly say it to military people. So just — you're just from a common standpoint. But that thing's haunted me for three years. For three years. I'll never forget. I walk out of a big rally. Everything was great. It was an unbelievable. And some of the fake news over there, one of them, said, Sir, did you call the, the dead, the dead military, suckers and losers? Before I even responded, I said, here we go. Because who would do such a thing? And I'm the exact — I rebuilt our military. I was better than any president ever to our military. <laughs> They'll say anything, just like they try and now say with Biden, with the cheap fakes or whatever they call it. Just what they — they made up a name. They're saying he was perfect. All these things, when he sat down because of — he had a, obviously a problem. In Normandy, do you think — do you think that Macron was impressed? Macron's an elegant guy, smart. He's at the top of his game. I don't think he was too impressed. But just like the other day, as I said, with Obama or any one of the other times, oh, it was fake reporting by the conservative media. It wasn't fake reporting. It was — it was just there. It was just there. But they made up a suckers and losers statement so terrible. And my stupid people — when I wanted to refute it, they said, Sir, don't dignify it with a refuddle. <laughs> Refutal or a refuddle? <laughs> what the hell word would that be? Refuddle? What they'll say, he didn't know, refuddle or refutle, but they don't know either. <laughs> sir, it should not be dignified, sir. I said, Well, I gotta fight that. That's a, the worst thing you could probably say to me would be that. He said, Sir. It's going nowhere. Three years later, it still simmers. And you know what? Anybody in the military — oh, now I fight. I talk about it all the time. Because it doesn't make sense. Nobody could say a thing like — you can't. Even if you hated the military, you couldn't say that, because it would be 
It would actually be dangerous. It would be, it would be so bad, nobody would say that. Uh, and uh, so now I speak about it all the time, because these people are liars. They make it up. It's now on top of that, you have AI. On top of that, you now have AI to go along with that. So it's, a, it's sort of a dangerous world out there. On day one, we will throw out Bidenomics and replace it with Maganomics, quickly. <laughs> Under Biden, the economy is in ruins. Inflation has cost the typical family $28,000. Think of that. The inflation is killing people. They make the same amount of money, or even if they made more, it doesn't matter. Inflation is destroying them. They can't buy anything anymore. I will end. I always say, you know, I, I sort of have this little thing. I shouldn't show it. Maybe I should save it for the debate. Okay? Look, I'll save it. I'm going to do this because this is private. There's only about 400 press back there. Look, inflation, this is what it does to you. This is Tic Tac now. This is Tic Tac. Let's go. See? It used to be that. That's what inflation. That's what inflation has done. That's what inflation has done. Glad everybody in this room has good eyes. But I will end the Biden inflation nightmare, and we will end it very quickly. I will stop Biden's trillions and trillions of dollars in wasteful spending and rapidly terminate the Green News scam. It's one of the greatest scams in history. I will repeal Crooked Joe's insane electric — how about the electric vehicle mandate? And we will drill, baby, drill. The — all cars are going to be electric. They don't go far. They cost too much. And by the way, electric cars have a great place. They have a great place, but, but not a place for 100 percent. Maybe not a place for 10 percent. Whatever it is, they have a place. You can't go far. And uh, they're going to all be made in China. They are expensive. Right now, you have hundreds of thousands. This is a great time to buy an electric car. You know why this — you know what? Do you ever notice the auto companies aren't upset about it? They're making cars that can't sell. They just can't sell. They have hundreds of thousands of them. You know why? Because we're spending trillions of dollars and giving them subsidy. So the auto, they, auto companies don't care. Normally, they'd all be bankrupt if that were the case. They're making cars that can't sell. Now they want to make your army tanks all electric so that we can go into a community near you. No, we go into enemy territory. We blast the hell out of them, but we do it in an environmentally friendly way. No, do you have a, No, it's crazy. We make the greatest army tanks in the world. We make them in Ohio. We make them in Lima. Lima. I was the one I stopped it. They said, sir, there's a plant that makes the army tanks. The only plant we have that does it. And I was president-elect, and I was called by Jim Jordan, who's great. You know Jim Jordan from Ohio? And he said, could you take a look at it, sir? Because I don't think you can replace it. So anyway, I went up, Lima. I went up, and I said, uh, wow. This place, is, this place is unbelievable. It makes army tanks. That's all they've done for years and years. They make the best tanks of the world. They were going to close it under, uh, I guess it was, you know, I guess it was Obama. But they were, it was scheduled to be closed. And I looked, I said, this is a room that is 20 times larger than this. And it's unbelievable. The, the you know, the ball bearings, that heavy all that heavy steel. and. You can almost move it with your hand. It's so incredible how it all works. And these guys are so professional. I said, if you close this, you'll never be able to open up a plant with this talent or this, you know, this kind of a plant. And uh, now they want — and I kept it open. I took it off the list. And, and it's, it, it makes more tanks than anybody in the world right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, all we do is give the tanks away. We make them. We give them away faster than we can make them. You need some tanks? Oh, yeah, we'll send them to you over there. And they're expensive suckers, too. But we'll make uh, — we'll, we'll provide all of our friends and many of our enemies with tanks, because half of the time, with Biden, you don't know if they're friends or enemies. We give them whatever they want. But when you look at it — but now they want to make them electric. And the problem is very similar. They don't go far. They're too heavy. Very heavy. You know, the battery — in fact, it's because — it's so much bigger than a tank for 
diesel fuel or gasoline, that they want to make a truck, like a toy truck, you know, like a little toy truck with a huge battery on the back. It's, it's almost as big as the Army tank. So when it goes into enemy territory, it's pulling this thing. I said, what happens if somebody blows it up? Well, that's your dead. <laughs> now you have, you don't have to hit the tank. You just have to hit the battery. No, they want to do it. Think of it. They want to do it. Now they'll say, oh, these stories are terrible. Well, these stories are, you know, you heard my story in the boat with the shark, right? I got killed on that. They thought I was rambling. I'm not rambling. They want to make boats and they, are demanding that they be all battery operated, all electric. And I was in South Carolina at this wonderful family boat yard. The big yard make a lot of boats, you know, from 17, like fishing boats, 17 to 30 feet. And I said, how's everything going? No good. They want us to go all electric. I said, well, would that work? No, because it's so heavy, we can't get the boat to float. <laughs> the battery is so heavy. So then I start talking about Asking questions, you know, I, have an, I had an uncle who was a great professor at MIT for many years, long, I think the longest tenure ever, very smart, had three different degrees. And, you know, so I have an aptitude for things. You know, there is such a thing as an aptitude. I said, well, what would happen if this boat is so heavy and started to sink and you're on the top of the boat? Do you get electrocuted or not? In other words, the boat is going down and you're on the top. Will the electric currents flow through the water and wipe you out? And let's say there's a shark about 10 yards over there. <laughs> Would I have to immediately abandon, or could I ride the electric down? And I said, sir, uh, I th nobody's ever asked us that question. <laughs> but sir, uh, I don't know. I said, well, I want to know because I guarantee you one thing. I don't care what happens. I'm staying with the electric. I'm not getting over with it. So I tell that story. It's, you know, just funny. And the fake news, they go, he told this crazy story with electric. And it's actually not crazy. It's sort of a smart story, right? It's sort of like, you know, it's like the snake. It's a smart. When you, you figure what you're leaving in, right, you're bringing it in. The, you know the snake, right? The snake. And the snake, I tell that. And they do the same thing. What does a snake have to do with illegal immigration? Well, <laughs> I think it has a lot to do with it, because that's exactly what you, you know what you get. And that's what we're getting. We're getting problems like you wouldn't believe, right? So uh, they want to go all electric. They want to make our airplanes, our fighter jets and electric, even though they're 18 percent less efficient. Now, the difference between 18 percent and 100 percent is the difference between being easily and immediately shot down or winning. They don't care. They don't care. And I say, why are they doing this? They're flying over enemy territory, and they don't want to affect the air. They're blowing the shit out of the place, but they don't want to. <laughs> think of it. They don't want to affect the air. They want it to be beautiful air, clean air and water. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> These people are stone cold crazy. <laughs> and these idiots are running our government. They're running our government. You know, I met with the truckers the other day. I met with the truckers the other day. Big thing. I'm a big Roger Penske fan, right? I like Roger. You know, he's won Indianapolis like 19 or 20 times. I'm a fan. But he owns trucks. And he was one of the guys there. And one of these people has 28,000 trucks. Think of that. I said, how many trucks do you have? 28,000, sir. I said, you got to be kidding. 28,000. And they're big ones. The 18-wheelers, they're big, big trucks. And they're really bothered. Oh, I'm solving that problem probably by doing this, because by everything I do, you know, when I go out and favor something like no tax on tips, they haven't been able to do that because, you know, they just set regulations that make it impossible for people that get tips to even live, to breathe. But no tax on tips, that's a big deal. Remember that, everybody? It's a big deal. I don't think they're going to be able to do that. You know, that's... I don't think they're going to be able to do it. They, they have been so vicious to these people. But now they'll soften up a lot just by my doing it. But I was with Roger Penske and these truckers. And they said, a big problem is they, uh, they want us to go all electric on our trucks. And I say, well, if you fill it up with diesel, and the big guy at the, at the meeting that had this big monster company, I mean, think of it, 28, starts with one truck, and then he's got 28,000 trucks over many, many decades. And he said, sir, every single year I bought a truck. He used very foul language, but I won't do it because I promised, I promised Franklin Graham, Graham, you know, Franklin, 
Franklin wrote me a letter the other day. I watched your rally. I thought it was great. But honestly, Mr. President, it would have been much better if you didn't use foul language. And I said to myself, he's wrong about that, because sometimes for emphasis, every once — I mean, I don't use real foul, but every once in a while, I'll use a little word here or there, and not a particularly bad one. But, but I said to myself, you know, I'm going to do it because I like him a lot. But he said, it's, it's great. Your stories are great, but you don't have to use. But sometimes there's no word that can describe it, right? I'm, I'm looking for a word. To, it's like when somebody tells tall tales, there's a certain word that starts with B, right? There's no word that I can find to replace, right? But I'm trying, Franklin. I'm trying. And when people, and we have these big rallies, you know, in uh, New Jersey, we just had a rally, 107,000 people. Can you believe it? 25,000 people in the South Bronx. So we're getting, we had 88,000 people in South Carolina, 63,000, 68,000 in Alabama. And I said, you know, when people start leaving early, and I'm going to say, I'm going to have to go back to the foul language, I think. <laughs> but so we have this meeting. And he said, I started off 50 years ago, and every single year that I bought a truck, it was better than the first year, better than the previous year. The truck got better, got stronger, faster, bigger, more fuel efficient. Every year for 50 years, those trucks get bigger. He said, sir, I build apartments. We call them apartments or those trucks. You would be proud to live in one of those. I said, I don't know about that. You know, they build the cabs with a place to stay. I said, I could handle it. I mean, I could. But he said, every year they get better. If they force this electric mandate on us, we'll go back 70 years, not 50 years. He said, we'll have to stop six times from New York to Los Angeles. I said, how many times do you have to stop now? None. We go directly New York to Los Angeles, all the way, no stops. I said, didn't you explain that to them? Yes, we do all the time. It doesn't make any difference to them. The other thing, I didn't know this, he told me that the truck will be more than two times heavier. He said, so if you do this, you're going to have to rebuild every bridge in the country. Can you believe it? No, how stupid, how stupid is it? And the other thing is it takes much more room. So a lot of your payload is going to be gone. It takes much, much more room. The whole thing will, you know, possibly never work. And that's okay. Some things you got to know. But I said, so what's their attitude? We don't care. We want you to go to electric. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. You can explain it to them. They're evil people. They're fascists. They don't care. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, we win. We are going to win, not me. We. I will have, if you go and vote, Christians, please. I'll report you to Ralph Reed. How about if Ralph didn't vote? I wonder, I want to check Ralph's voting record. <laughs> he votes. If Ralph, if Ralph, I would be shocked. But just, I'm saying that because you have to remember, you do have to do it because you don't do it. But we will win the presidency and I'll have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine, which would have never happened if I were president. I will restore that. Now, I'll have that settled. But, but you know what's happened? It's just so. It would have never happened. You wouldn't have any lives taken. You wouldn't have had those ancient cities, those gorgeous golden towers knocked down or bliter. You can never build that stuff again, that history. But uh, far more people are dead than they said. And you would have never had the attack on Israel on October 7th. You would have never had it. You would have never had the attack on Israel. And you wouldn't have had inflation. I had the oil. It was caused by energy. Now it's caused by everything. The energy started it and started it with a, with a level of, of — nobody's ever seen anything like it. The, the inflation — I believe it's the worst inflation this country's ever had. And inflation is known as a country buster. So you wouldn't have had just those three things. Think of it. If you didn't have Ukraine, if you didn't have inflation, and if you didn't have the attack on Israel, just those three, what a different world this would be. Just those three, and then we could name about 30 more. You wouldn't have had that Afghanistan disaster, as an example. Yeah. Not getting out. I was going to get out. I was going to keep Bagram, though, because it's one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons. They're giving up one of the biggest air bases in the world. You know who occupies it now? Take a guess. China! 
China occupies Bagram. Thank you very much. Did they send us a letter, President Xi? Where's your letter? Thanks. It's uh, unbelievable. I would have kept it not for Afghanistan, but it's one hour away from where they make their nuclear weapons. In my next term, we will build a great iron dome over our country, a dome like has never been seen before, a state-of-the-art missile defense shield that will be entirely built in America and create jobs, jobs, jobs. We're going to build it in America. Israel has it. Israel has it. Why don't we have it? I mean, we're more of a target in many ways than Israel. Why don't we have it? And by the way, 300 missiles shot. Only one got through, and that was wounded. It didn't hit its target. But uh, so 300 missiles shot, and essentially none got through. It was uh, it, Why don't we have it? We're going to have it, and we're going to build it in America. It's all going to be made. We're not going to be shipping it out to other countries to do like we do so stupidly. You know, they make fighter jets where they have different countries make different parts. And I said, what happens in case of a war? You're going to be sending parts all over the place? You've got to make the jet in one location. These people are crazy. No, they do it. They, they, they concede it to all these countries. Well, we want to make the engine. We want to make the, the wing. So you got wings being set. We want to make the tail. You got these parts that they put it together. You got to make your planes. This is military stuff. You got to make your planes common sense. We are the party of common sense. That's what we are. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they have ever been before. Right now, they're killing fields, our cities. We're going to give back our law enforcement. We're going to give it back the, the respect that they deserve. They are being treated so badly. If they do something that's harsh to stop a crime, they end up losing their pension. They end up losing their job. They end up losing their family and their home. And I'm giving immunity to police all over the country for that. I mean, we have some police forces where they make you go out and get a lawyer to defend yourself. Can you? They won't defend you. You have to hire your own lawyer. Now, I know more about lawyers than any man, perhaps. <laughs> and I don't like lawyers, and I don't like the fees. But can you imagine a policeman having to hire a lawyer to defend himself? We are going to give immunity to police when they do their job. We will take over the horribly run capital of our nation in Washington, D.C. It is so badly run. And we will clean it, renovate it, and rebuild our capital city so that it is no longer a nightmare of murder and crime. We are going to have Look, they go down from places. I mean, think of it, what's happening here. They come from Iowa. They come from Idaho. That was, those are the two that Biden always gets confused. It's wonderful to be in Iowa. But he notices the fields are all potato fields. I didn't know they made so many potatoes in Iowa. The worst is what he said, it's great to be in Florida. And he's in Maine. You know, you look, <laughs> you're looking outside. It's freezing. It's great to be in Florida. I love the people of Florida. So much so that we're leading in Florida by about 17 points. <laughs> but we're not going to have this capital of ours that we love and cherish be a victim in itself of all of the murder and crime that's taking place. I lost a man who was a great person. Everyone loved him. It was a carjacking. He was waiting for his wife, and somebody came out. Didn't even give him a warning, just said, uh, just took a gun, shot him through the head five months ago. Shot him through the head. The wife is walking out. He was picking up the wife from work. Shot him through the head, dumped him out of the, into the street, took the car. They caught him. And you know he'll be protected by all sorts of things. Those people get protected. We don't get protected, but they get protected. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. I will support a strong policy, which I have, of universal school choice, allowing parents to choose the public, private, charter, or religious school that best suits their children. 
I will support America's homeschool families, including allowing 529 education savings accounts to be used for homeschooling expenses, up to $10,000 a year per child, completely tax-free. This room likes that more than some rooms. Some rooms don't, and that's okay. But this room does. That's good. Glad I said it, actually. <laughs> and I will shut down the Federal Department of Education, and we will move everything back to the states where it belongs and where they can individualize education and do it with the love for their children. Thank you. Think of it. We spend more money per pupil than any country in the world. Vote. Oh, vote. Go ahead. Vote. 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 Thank you. We spend more money per pupil. Think of it. You know the expression? And I said it to a large African-American group of people four years ago. What the hell do you have to lose? You're the worst in income. You're the worst on crime. Your cities and your areas are being decimated. You can't, you can't get a home. You can't get mortgage. You can't get the last on I said, and the Democrats have for 100 years run these cities, 100 years. I said to them, what the hell do you have to lose? And you know what? They agreed with me, and I did very well. And now we're at the highest level that any Republican has been with African Americans and with Hispanic Americans. Now, I'm going over this list. Every single thing was bad. I said, what do you have to lose? But I say the same thing about the education. So we're last per pupil. We're last. We're at the bottom of the list in terms of the capabilities. 40 different countries. We're at the bottom of almost every list. But we're f the top of the list in cost spent per pupil. We spend more money per pupil than any other country in the world, by far. And yet, we're last on the list in terms of, so what the hell do we have to lose? But I also know, like places like, go back to two I just mentioned, but look at Iowa, look at Idaho, look at some of these. You'll have some of the best school systems in the world. And you know what we'll do? We'll give them about half the money that we send them now. And for half the money, they'll have a lot of money left over. We'll cut, we'll cut our budget in half. And, and not everybody's going to be great. I mean, Gavin Newscomb will not do a good job with education. <laughs> So I, you know, I don't expect that out of him, but I, and I don't expect it out of certain other people. I don't want to mention too many people, but I don't, I mean, he won't, he'll do a horrible job, probably be, it won't be any worse than it is now, can't get any worse. But many of the states, I would say 40 of the, I went over them, 40 of the 50 states will do much better. And I'll bet you 30 of the states will be phenomenal. It'll be like beautiful, it'll be like Norway. You know, Norway has a great education system. In New York, they said, yes, we're studying the Norwegian plan. Oh, really? You're studying the Norwegian plan? Well, you better bring a lot of cops along because you're having a lot of problems, right? We're studying the plan of uh, Norway and uh, Denmark. And actually, China is very high on the list. I mean, China is number three or four on the list. Think of it. Can you imagine that China is number three or four on the list? No, no, we're going to give it back to the states, and most of those states are going to do a phenomenal job, and we'll spend less than half the money on education. We'll have about two people in Washington. The two people will make sure that we have to guarantee that they're teaching a little English, right? That English is out there. But basically, there won't be a lot of coordination, because other than, again, common sense, we're going to take, we're going to save a fortune, and many of our states will produce unbelievable students that will be able to rival Norway and Denmark and all of these places that are Some won't, and that's okay.
It's a lot better than it will be now. I will also take historic action to defeat the poison of left-wing gender ideology and restore the timeless truth that God created two genders, male and female. And I will immediately, on my first day, sign an executive order to keep men out of women's sports. That will take, that'll take about 10 minutes. And I will fully uphold the Second Amendment because your guns are under siege. And I protected them for four years. You were protected. We will protect innocent life, and we will restore free speech right from the beginning. And I will secure our elections. I will secure our elections. And as I said, our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots, proof of citizenship, and a thing called voter ID. You know, when you, when you negotiate with the Democrats, you start off, you start off and say, look, the one thing we have to have voter ID, no deal. And I said, wait a minute, wait, let's get this. We want voter ID. In other words, a little identification, right? Nope, we don't want to have that. Why don't they want? Because they want to cheat, that's why. <laughs> they will, you know, when you go into the Democrat, I always say Democrat, you know, they'd rather have it the Democratic National. It's much nicer sound. Why don't they change the name? It's probably better. They hate it when you say the Democrat National Convention, right? It's much more beautiful. Actually, even when I make a speech, if I want to make a nice, elegant speech, Let's say I came in here with a different attitude today. <laughs> and I wanted to make, I wanted to really, I'd say the Democratic National Convention. Now I say the Democrat National Convention. It doesn't sound, it sounds flat, right? But I call them that because they don't want to be called that. <laughs> they don't want to be called that. But when you go into their convention, you've got cards that are like, do you ever see some prisoners where they go like this? Well, how about my car? Did you see that picture of me? Did you see that? Do you believe that one? My parents said, what the hell happened to my boy? <laughs> that was not in the cards. They didn't teach me that at the Wharton School of Finance. <laughs> no, they're bad. These are bad people. But they have all sorts of information. They have everything. They have everything down. So it's okay for them when they have their convention to have a big card on your chest, hanging down off your chest. But it's no good for uh, voting. They don't want it for voting because they want to cheat. We're not going to let them get away with it anymore. And there is one thing I will say, too big to rig. You make it too big to rig, we don't have to worry about it. There's a level at which they can't. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as crooked Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. He's crooked. He's a total thief. So if you want to save America, get your friends, get your family, and get everyone out to vote, you got to go vote. I'll say it again and again. Vote, Christians. You got to vote. And do it early if you want. You know, do it early. Do it. Just do it. You got to vote. And watch your vote. Guard your vote and follow your vote. Follow your vote. Michael Watley's doing a great job. He's here. Michael, thank you very much, Michael. Thank you. And if you want to volunteer to help us defend election integrity, sign up at protectthevote.com. I tell my people, I don't need any votes. We got all the votes we need. I don't need votes. All I want to do is make sure that we guard our vote. It's guard. Uh, we stop the steal, okay? You know, there's a lot of expressions. I want the vote guarded. I want the steal stopped because we don't need the votes. We have the votes. We have more votes than we need. What we need, I tell these guys, I tell even RNC, I tell Michael, I tell Laura, I don't care. We have all the votes. What I don't want is those votes to disappear. They disappear. And new votes appear, brilliantly appear. That's what we have to do. If we do that, we have it made. If we don't do that, we're fools, okay? We're fools. In conclusion, America has always been a nation, one built and sustained by Americans of faith. So true. It was faith that led the pilgrims to cross an ocean and settle this majestic continent. It was belief in our Creator that led the patriots to defend their liberties in the war for independence. It was belief in America's God-given destiny that pushed the pioneers to journey west. It was 
Trust in God that led the generations of American believers to end slavery, defeat fascism and communism, and expand civil rights and make this into the greatest and most exceptional nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation in serious decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, willpower, and strength. We are a nation that has lost, quite simply, its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Less than four years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. Yeah. With the right leadership, every disaster crooked Joe Biden has created can be fixed, and it can be fixed very quickly. Every problem can be solved, and every wrong can be rectified. By this time next year, America's borders will be strong, sealed, and secure. We will let people come into our country, but they will be let in legally. They will come in through a legal process. Inflation will be in full retreat. Our economy will be roaring back. Optimism will be surging. The American dream will be thriving again for citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. Law and justice will reign all throughout our land. Freedom will be restored. The flame of liberty will be burning bright again. Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country, will be a fading memory of the past. And our great silent majority, including the once forgotten men and women of our country, will be the one shaping America's magnificent future when I am the 47th President of the United States. Because we are all Americans, and together we will show November 5th to be the most important day in the history of America. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. We will make America free again. And we will make America great again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Faith and freedom. Ralph, thank you. God bless you all. God bless you.